Let's see how that might actually <laughs> not. I mean, like, I hear what she's saying. With YouTube, YouTube's a different beast where. It's, oh, yeah. It's not the same. I used to be a blogger. Hell yeah. YouTube is tough, man. You, how, tell us about your vlogging. Oh, uh, we're doing like uh, travel and fashion blogging. You know what I'm saying? And that, that was an, another thing where I got to learn a lot about Photoshop and different things like that. And project I did with my wife and pretty much blew up, man. My wife was writing for editorials, doing blogging and. We would do like travel vlogs and stuff and run around that crazy and you know that was pretty that was pretty dope too and i was doing that during hip-hop too but it, it was definitely that was another whole different genre you know of different different world you know what i'm saying oh, you know, that you got to constantly be fighting with youtube you got to constantly be trying to get your your numbers up subscribers like all that shit mattered you know what i'm saying all that stuff mattered your subscribers were the biggest thing subscribe to my channel yeah i say it all the time I'm like dead it in my soul. I, I went from ironically saying it to just saying it to now nah, I really right. believe it. Like, yo, subscribe, like, follow, yo. Like, it doesn't feel right if I don't say that at least once, you know? And you know why? Because yeah. you have to. If you don't say it, people won't right. do it. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> like, you, you think, like, like, you think, like, you could get away. No. You really yeah. do have to say that shit. And if you say it at the yeah. beginning, that video will get more subscribers. And it's just like, right. make sure you <laughs> smash that like button. <laughs> anyway, it's not my favorite part of YouTube. It's not my favorite part of any of it. Like, that's not my favorite part. Yeah. It's just the necessary right. evil to me. And I grew up with an age group that makes it easier to embrace it. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. It's all good, man. Nah. I embrace it. I'm, I'm with, um, like I never had half of that live scene stuff that you got to go through. I mean, just in mm -hmm. terms of that, I got to perform a bunch, but Montreal's been in a weird place. Like the uh, construction memes you might see about Montreal, that shit fucked up downtown. <laughs> downtown is not what it used to be. Even before COVID, it was dying, and now it's deaded. Okay. Nobody knows what the fuck happens next. However, I believe it'll be like kind of a golden era situation. If everything's deaded, then all that's left is to bloom new life and the shit. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. I think I think it'll eventually, as we get closer and closer to being primitive again, which will happen because all this balloon will eventually pop, right? I think that uh, people will become primitive again and that Shakespeare kind of vibe of lyrics and everything will become a lot more important. I think a lot of people don't... It's important for me, as even as a listener, I want to hear the MC grab the mic and do what LeBron does with a basketball. Or I want to see... I just want to see pure skill. Like, I think... All that wordplay matters and as less word fillers as possible. Like, I think it's so important, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, because, it, you know, when we turn off the TV, we want to listen to our music. And right. I'd rather listen to music than watch TV any day. <laughs> mm. You know? I can't say I fully agree. There are definitely Netflix shows that crap my attention. I'm a, but music's still <laughs> pretty close. Like, mu my music's like my number one, but like, yo, it's, it's a time of day thing. Like, I just have a time of day for music and a time of day for Netflix and a time of day for it. But yeah. like, I hear what you're saying. And, like, the marketer in me is like, hmm. But then, like, the passionate fan in me is like, yeah, I get you. So, like, I totally get, like, where you're at, though. And I think that that's what the beauty of the internet does is it lets all the hip-hop heads connect. Like, there'd be wildly, like, 30,000 people in a room praising Boom Bap in, like, Facebook groups mm -hmm. right now creating this entire thing. Um, yep. Do you listen to Snow Goons at all? Snow Goons? Yeah, man. Snow Goons. They've been around for a long time, too, since the MySpace era. Uh, Sick Nature is my boy. He always puts me on his playlist. Um, good, great talent. They're always working hard. Them dudes are We've all been in the same same spots, man. They just kept going and going and going until they got their opportunity, man. Salute to Snow Goons. Yeah, it's cool. And just because Immortal asked before, and this was his question, uh, who do you listen to the most? Like, who are you, like, you the biggest fans of? Oh, man. I, so I'm definitely more of like a Feral Monch kind of uh, listener or Buster Rhymes, but a lot of stuff I listen to is either the stuff – with my affiliates people that i you know know around me and stuff i like i like the underground artists you know what i'm saying there hasn't been a lot of people that blow my mind that are out on the surface yet but i love the new rizza album dj scratch i'm like a huge wu-tang fan so this was huge for me i love the new rizza album it's amazing <laughs> i'm so hyped about it <laughs> that's dope 
Car homage yeah. is a cool answer. Oh, that's cool. I yeah. like your passion for it. Have you ever heard of MC Till's Boom Bap review? No. It's just a book where he collects a bunch of Boom Bap albums and literally publishes a review book. It's meant to be like a coffee table fucking piece for you to pick up with your peeps and read. Um, okay. I don't know. It seems like it's right up your alley. Like you'd, you'd really get a kick out of this. <clears throat> yeah. So what is next for you? Like you've gotten to the point where you'd be like, you know, where like I, I got the feeling you're just in this machine mode. You're producing, you're releasing, you just got everything going. Your life's like on lock. So like, what's the next part for you and your dreams or the reality? Like, what are you going towards? Uh, I definitely would like to, I'm not searching for some big fancy record label to sign me, but I would love distribution. I would definitely love distribution where it, a lot of physical was getting out there, but you know, distribution to the point where they have a plat plateau of their own. Somebody that might take a little bit, take a little bit of the weight off of me, where I can keep creating these, you know, and where I would start seeing, you know, more back from it. But I guess the goal really is is to get to keep getting this play until something snaps. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it usually will, because I believe it will. You know what I'm saying? Until something snaps and I get a bigger opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Because I'd like to, I'd like to start performing at festivals. If that's what you're really asking, I definitely would like to, to perform at the festivals, and you know, because that's really where the money's at. It's not from selling anything, music. It's from going out and performing. That's where the money is. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. that's all that press kit stuff and all the other logistics come into play. I've been looking into how to make my press kit look hotter. Because I was like, that's Yo, good. Festivals yeah, you look need a press fire. kit. Yeah, it's not even just having it. It has to look good because that's like your CV, yes. right? So in order yep. for your press kit to look good, you have to go do interesting shit recently in order for it to right. be hot. I know what you mean. Because yep. like the, like, yeah. I have a lot of hot going for me prior to COVID. I'd done shit like, like my press kit would have been kind of fire in 2016, but it was not. Then I just let it go and went to the internet. Internet killed my press kit. <laughs> Good for the rest mm -hmm. of my life, but bad for that one thing. Um, yeah, press kits are important. Bios, all that. I would recommend that to any artist. You got to have your bio. Bro, people always can ask for your bio. Yeah, I mean, bio's easy. I can write, but like in in general, yeah. I, I mean, it's good for everyone um, to have that stuff. But like, how how would you go about getting yourself booked at festivals? If you could like do it, that's the one thing. That's that's what I'm saying. That's why it's like on my goal list. Like I. I've yet to, you know, mm. what I'm saying, figure that part out yet. But I definitely, uh, I'm familiar with some of the ones that do it. So I guess I don't, I don't know. I'm sure they get a flood of uh, submissions. I'd rather know them on a personal level, like I'm meeting these DJs, mm. you know, like where they'll be interested in it, anyways, you know. I got told quite a few of these festivals is like pay, pay to play. A lot of these, I know. Oh, pay to play, huh? I know oh, the gathering oh, of the juggalos that. is. I mean, I don't know about all of them, but I know everybody that is like India Gathering of the Juggalos paid to get there, and they they making the back really? on merch. Yeah, Gathering of the Juggalos, one hundred percent. Oh, no, no, no. 100%. oh I, I was talking more of a paid opportunity. Hopefully, <laughs> I mean, like Tech Nine probably gets paid, but like okay. the little but artist. That's what I'm working towards. I'm, I'm I'm gonna work until I get opportunities. But, yo, like Tech Nine most of these shits, man. <laughs> I don't know. I looked into the festivals. Like I was looking at stuff. Like how do these guys get? Yo, it's like yo, the guy charges this much. I'm like ah. Oh, I can't afford that. That's crazy. That's crazy. I haven't heard that one either. Nah, I'm not trying to diminish it. I want to know where the ones that will just offer me clout at this point. I'll take the clout ones. Yeah. Give me the fucking right. footage. <laughs> That's all I want is the footage <laughs> of the shit. But yeah, nah, I mean, do you feel like, do you feel like there's an opportunity outside of festivals to set up like touring things as an indie person? Like I know you don't necessarily want to run the logistics, but the one thing I learned about U.S. geography is y'all could be doing wild amounts of shows in a weekend a lot easier than I can. Um, mm. Is that like an avenue? Really? Yeah, I mean, shit. I'm gonna definitely gonna have to hit you up about that. I'm gonna have to call you sometime and get some advice on that one. Yo, I just talked to people. Because I'm cool on that point. Because yo, people be just telling me like shit, like because. Yo, like there's cities and all the little small towns and college towns got shit and then you holler at all the people. And just because a lot of places in the States are close to a lot of places in the States, you can just coordinate your weekend <laughs> to go perform at like four places. Yeah. No, I would be that's 
that's what I would need some guidance on for sure. Uh, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I know it as much as I just described outside of doing it myself where I would pick up phones and call people. And honestly, my yes. my strategy is going to be to find a girl that is way nicer than me to go represent me. That's my good. Yeah, that's I just I'm would need to know it. who to pick up the phone and call too. That's, I guess that would be my problem. Yo, straight up, fucking venues. Go on Facebook. Yo, what's good? My name is... <laughs> It's not even deep. Yeah. No, I mean, that's what I mean. Those venues, I just, you know, oh, this is the spot to look, you know, this is the college that, you know, uh, that's just, is there like a book that says like, oh, these are where the performance spots are? You said you saw a geographic. Um, you know what I'm nah, man, I just used, I, I was talking to people and they just told me about it. And then it's like, well, cause you go to the first one and it's a Pandora's box for you at that point. Right. Yeah. Well, tell me about the next ones. You're going to unlock it, but yeah, right. just pick a, like, I don't know what you, I don't know if you're, you're in Charlotte now, but let's say you're in Charlotte, right. You would then just look at the map and look at everywhere you can drive to within four hours and then figure out where all the cities are and then Google all of these cities and see what bars they're at and then that'll all pop up really fast then figure out what has events. Well, yeah, that part. And it's just... Like who takes boom bab, you know, all those little details. I just would have to figure out that part, you know? There's no way around it, man. Yo, what's good? My name is... You can check me. There's no way around that shit. I spent the last seven years of my life trying to find a way around that shit. There's no way around it. No way. Okay. You can literally you know, buy lists on the internet of everybody that's everybody. Yeah. Just so you can go know. do that. Yeah. I just don't think there's a way around it. I just like, you know, you got to like gotcha. holler at people and then be attractive. And I mean, end of the week, probably no way more about event doing than me. But like, yeah, it just turns into basic event production and logistics. <laughs> yeah. Which I got. See, there's something I definitely got to research a little bit more. Man. And then, Cause usually I just get them through friends or opportunities or people that's hit me up, you know. Mm. So I got to learn how to hit other people up, like you said. You know, got to work better. I just don't know a way around it this time around. I said I spent my whole life not doing that and didn't get me anywhere. So I started talking to New York people, and New York people be bold, right? So you just got to tap back into your inner New Yorker. Yep, got you. That shit yeah. probably work really well. Who's the biggest name you ever battled? Is a question we just got. Uh, uh, it wasn't necessarily a battle, but it was like a head to head. It was way, way, way back in the days. I was on stage with Jean Grey. This was a long time ago, but it wasn't a battle because if it was, she she definitely got me that day because she was in. You know, I was probably a little nervous that night, unfortunately, because I was like I wasn't expecting to go up against a female MC. That was that good, but that was like probably the who only thing i could think of as far as who is it? Uh, gene gray oh shit yeah you know yeah. gene gray is really but, good you know this was like probably 96 95 somewhere around there mm. like maybe even 94 damn we all been going for a long time some of us <laughs> i mean arguably <laughs> my that's that makes you good that you're still at it today i mean it like i know i said it kind of weird but like it makes you like really good at what you do that you are <laughs> Grace smashed him as a comment. I mean, that's what happens sometimes. <laughs> She's like excellent at a tier of excellent. That's really like, like I've never heard a person who've heard Jean Grey's music who said it was not good. Like I never yeah, right. encountered that. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't feel bad if Jean Grey smashed me like that. It would be like whatever. But it's also <laughs> a funny sentence. <laughs> anyway, uh, who are your top three MCs? Top three MCs, definitely. Um, I definitely would say Rakim. I definitely would say Karis one. And number three would definitely have to be just just for I would have to say Big Daddy Kane. Mm. I know who my other two would be after that, but that would that would be my top three right there. Uh, who would be your other two after that? Buster Rhymes and Black Thought. Fair. Um, I just yeah. figured if you know it, my, my fear with that question when it comes to some people can't answer it, but you're like ready to go on this shit and I love yeah, it. Yeah, hell yeah, 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 bro. <laughs> um, I appreciate all of this. Um, so you, you coming at it on the grind still, do you have any like last things that you are up to that we haven't really covered that I can't really think of asking at this moment? Cause you seem to be uh, well, like a guy yeah, with many crafts. Ones. So I don't know what I've Yeah, missed. I'm releasing a certain ones project in the summertime, which is going to be fire. It's with, with my team, the certain ones, and we're uh, putting it out. I'm working with a DJ called DJ Evidence, mm. and it's going to be like an international boom bap vibe. It's really fire. 
I'm really excited about that project. And uh, do you, sorry, outside of that, do you have like anything else? Like, just like wisdom wise, you know, words of advice to the found folk, like a closing thought kind of thing. Oh man, um, I know a really good one is what's helped me in music too, and it's in life. You know, is is ego is edging God out. You know, is the acronym for ego is mm. removing from your ego. You know, you, you you'll just travel so much further spiritually, and and you know it's just a beautiful thing that's where i got better as a musician and a person but was by removing my ego and as i was saying all that which is for the record a great tidbit but who are your top three producers uh dj premier uh, marley marl and um it's a toss-up between p rock and rizza but i definitely would would say marley marl i'll definitely say marley marl first but premier P Rock, mm. you know what I'm saying? Definitely the, the godfathers in my opinion. That's amazing. Yeah, Q tips a godfather too, but I, I really was I was a bit in love with Gang Stars beats. Those beats were just incredible. <laughs> Man, I love your passion for it all. And I I'm really glad that we had the chance to talk. All of your links and stuff, yeah. um, I, they appear in the description below. Um, but you can find him at, you know, Witchcraft Seven spell it with the h you know look at the video yep. and shit make sure you spell it correct and all the links will be in the description <laughs> for other people because i realize there's technically you know it could be audio or whatever still make sure that y'all follow him go do the give him love thing he's got a band camp which means you know give him money <laughs> and all the good stuff out there in the world. <laughs> um i appreciate you coming through and sharing your story with us honestly it's interesting to hear all of but just how different it is and how you're like so willing to be at it like 25 albums and you're still hustling at it with the passion of like a 17 year old that just be starting that's really 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 commendable and that's really cool i mean to me that's really what we should be aspiring for is the thirst to pursue regardless so you'd be a living example of that and i appreciate that we got this chat also on a shout out end of the week because without end of the week we wouldn't be here they'd be like setting up their things and apparently we'll have a fancy you know whole new thing on their side next week and you know they'd be like making big moves too you know uh y'all should go follow oh, yeah. support them uh slash yep. eo so eodub.com is the way to get to all their stuff eodub.com you'll get all their good yep. stuff there and for all of you out there, make sure to like, follow, subscribe, all that good things too. Um, I really appreciate all of you coming through. Like I said, um, it, it was a good chat. I don't know how else to miss to say. I appreciate all that. And as we wrap up, though, live long and prosper, everybody out there in the world. No doubt, man.